Filmmakers have tried for decades to immortalise sporting heroes, often with mixed results. After all, there's nothing quite like live sport. But for me, there's one film that stands out above all others, an Oscar-winning masterpiece charting the story of a rather special Scotsman. The music wasn't bad either. Be honest, at some stage we've all been inspired to try a little slow-motion running. Chariots of Fire charts the progress of two British sprinters preparing for the 1924 Olympic Games, Harold Abrahams and Eric Liddell. A strong Christian, Eric refused to run in the 100 metres, his favoured event, as the heats were run on the Sunday. Instead, he ran in the 400 metres and won gold. The Eric Liddell story has inspired many over the years, but for me it's not so much what he achieved on the track, but the Christian life he lived off it. He spent much of his later life as a missionary in China, but it was here at Eltham College where he was educated, just a stone's throw from Greenwich. We are quite literally looking for Eric, so where is he, fellas? Uh, here he is as captain of cricket in 1919. Okay. Skipper there. in the middle, obviously. Yeah. Um, he's... Is hit there with Down his here brother. as well, yeah. OK, so this is his yeah. elder brother. I think the great thing about Eric Little is that you hear about his story from day one. When I joined in year three, everyone would sit in the pews at the front and look at the stained glass window. I think, obviously, it's incredible that you can firstly be an Olympian, but the fact that you can sacrifice potential success, obviously, he didn't run on the Sunday, he didn't run the uh, 110 yards. He, he was willing to sacrifice his success just to prove how strong his faith was and just say that, look, I'm not running, that's the way I'm going to do it, I'll run the 400 if I have to. I think that also shows the selfless nature of Eric Liddell. And in his later life, he went out to China to do missionary work, which is a very selfless thing to do. Like, he's leave, leaving everything he knows behind to a foreign country. And, yeah, it shows he's, how selfless he is. His brother was a brilliant athlete as well, and I remember looking at the records, and he was, he was only 16, his brother was 18, and they held every record for every <laughs> event. First and second, first and second. It's just amazing that they've stood for such a long time as well. I've been reliably informed you're a bit of a speedster, so how, how close to the sort of 110 yards do you get? I'm nowhere near the standard of Eric Lidl, no. You've got a bit of work to do? Yeah, still got a lot of work to do, actually. Character-wise as well. If you come to school at Elton College, which has its heritage, and you've been educated in the context of Eric Lidl and his values, it's not the sort of thing you forget. Eric Liddle was just a fantastic man. You've been taught to live your life the way Eric Liddle sort of lived his model hours around his. It, he wouldn't approve of us saying that because he would want us to say we should live our life like Christ. But if we could get close to Eric Liddle, that would be great as well. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak. To those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Um, the winner of year 700 metres and 200 metres. Eric Liddell's spirit lives on in Eltham College, not least at the annual sports day, where he first showed his running talents. But this year, they welcomed a very special guest. Patricia Liddell Russell is the eldest daughter of Eric Liddell, and she made a rare visit to the UK from her home in Canada, to present the Sports Day prizes and share her memories with songs of praise. The last time I saw him, I was actually six years old, and people say, how can you remember anything from six? But I remember that summer in Scotland as uh, one of the most wonderful summers that we've ever had. And he, <laughs> he was lots of fun. He was lots of fun. He had a winning personality. People just loved him. And his faith sort of shone out of him. 
He loved to run. He loved to run, and I think it expressed his joy of life. The film touches on the Olympics and the struggle and the difference between the two runners, the dynamics. But his, his real life began after the Olympics and the important part. And as my mother said, he very seldom spoke about the Olympics. It was, it was great fun, but there were, there were other things that had to be done that were more important. At the height of his fame, Eric left for China to follow in his family's footsteps as a missionary. Two decades later, the Second World War made China a dangerous place, and Eric sent his wife and his young family to the safety of Canada, but he stayed behind. He continued to serve others, even when interned in a Japanese prison camp, before falling ill just months before the end of the war. I think he thought he'd had a nervous breakdown, and this... This was distressing to him because he thought his faith should be strong enough to carry him through. And of course, he had an extraordinary, extraordinary faith. But he had a brain tumor growing. And at the end, they had a hospital there. And he asked the um, band, I think it was the Salvation Army band, to play his favorite hymn. <clears throat> and they played outside the window. Be still my soul to the tune of Finlandia. This hymn has always been very special to us as a family. Somehow it just brings us closer to him. I wish I'd known him more. I knew him through my mother and as a small child. But my son, one of my sons said the other day, gosh, mom, I wish I'd known him. You know, I wish I had known him. And I said, don't we all? Yeah.